Unlike every other race of the week, a set off to the start line for the senior, still determined to win, even more determined than anything. But uh, rather than go straight into the lap like every other race with, with a very aggressive approach, I thought I'll change my tactics back to my older style of riding and really try and settle in quicker and uh, treat each section a lot smoother, braking quicker and everything. And uh, I think it, it worked out and I settled a lot faster. We changed the back tyre um, in the first pit stop so that we wouldn't lose time later in the race just in case it got in a, a close situation uh, Dyson for the lead with Carl. Uh, at least I knew I was on good rubber that would last the rest of the race. I'm really having to go hard now because I, I know I've lost time in the pits by changing the tyre so I'm just trying as hard as I can. I'd pulled back some time on Carl uh, out to Glen Helen. I got my first signal uh, at the 13th and uh, I knew I was closing in so I was just waiting on my next board as I approached the gooseneck here. Approaching Union Mills, I'm still having trouble with the back marker here, so just really got to watch way up where the boy's going to go and then try and squirt past them. Yeah, I'd, I got a signal that I was in the lead here, so um, I was really happy about that and really starting to charge. As we come in, into the bungalow bridge, I'd noticed Robert Holden looked back and spotted me coming in, and he, he actually signalled on the wrong side here. By the time I got to the corner, I was, I was passing him on the other side. I'd, I'd already made a bit of ground by the time we got to Brandywell. There's a good example of how hard I was trying. I was even using the bus stop at Schoolhouse Corner there. Yeah, I knew I had a, the six second advantage, so I thought he's going to struggle to try and pull that back, but he'll be trying as hard as he can, so I thought if I can just ride smooth but keep it on the gas, he'll struggle to pull it back. You must be uh, heart rate pulse right up there, eyes squinting, everything. Yeah, well, we, we took the precaution of changing a tyre on the second lap just to be care uh, just to be careful, basically. It looked good uh, after those two laps. We had a bit of a scramble to get the fuel cap in, unfortunately, which may have lost us a couple of seconds, but uh, the way Steve's riding, the way Mike appears to be going, I hope he can do it. Yeah, I was trying not to panic on the last lap. I was trying to... Because the Norton runs deep into a corner, I was trying to uh, get myself to break that little bit quicker and just keep it steady, try and keep my cool, you know, and just hope that I could uh, keep that six seconds advantage over Carl over the mountain. history, a win for his love and a win for Norton. Relieved now or what? Oh, am I ever. <laughs> history in the making, party I tonight? Hope so. Maybe, <laughs> if we can afford it. <laughs> yeah, it was a hard race, but uh, 
I was really pleased because every other race this week, the first signal I've got's usually been fourth or fifth, but first signal out is second minus two, and I thought, yes, I just like settled in a lot in that first lap, and I knew if I was there at the start, I'd be almost there at the end, and it's just worked out perfect. Good I'd, race plan. <laughs> I'm pleased. I rode really, really hard. I had a few problems with the front brake, and the handling didn't seem as good as it was on Saturday. And, I just think that Steve's riding real good and the Norton must just have had that speed advantage on us, I think, maybe. Have you changed the bike since uh, the Formula 1? No, I didn't touch it, um, but it just seemed to be sitting down at the back of my legs, coming out of corners and lifting the front up, and, you know, over Bray on the last lap, I had a real bad moment, like, and I got to quarter bridge, I had just no front brake, and I had to pump light, but that happened quite a few times, and the exhaust started blowing with two laps to go, but I don't know if it lost power, but it just, it just really gave me ear it, you know, and my ears are just ringing now, like... Carl Fogarty didn't win, but he did finish at last. And he did produce an absolutely unbelievable last lap, three seconds under the old one, and that on a bike that was past its best, so you know how hard he was really trying. And it was a record-breaking race in many ways. The race record was held by Steve Hislop on the RVF at 121.09 miles an hour in one hour, 52 minutes, 10.2 seconds. Now it's 121.28 in one hour, 51 minutes, 59.6. Steve Hislop again, but on a Norton. The lap record was Hislop's at 1821.8, 123.27. Now it's Fogarty's in 18 minutes, 18.8, 123.61 for the lap and outright records. But the most important statistic of them all is that Steve Hislop and the White Norton have ended a 30-year drought for British manufacturers. Norton have won the most demanding road race of them all for the first time since Mike Hailwood did it in 1961.